Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Matthew Kaminsky. I'm the editor-in-chief of Politico. And um, good to have you th this morning to discuss the defense of Europe. Um, on a small personal note, I, I started off 30 years ago as a journalist in Vilnius, um, looking at the Baltics, spent the next three years in Ukraine, then went to the, to the Balkans. At the time, it felt like we were settling a lot. Uh, there were some certainties that were put in place, and much has changed. But there is so much uncertain right now. Europe is in the midst. It's entering its second year of the biggest ground war since World War II. Uh, the Balkans seem like everything is not right there. A lot of question marks over the future of the Western alliance. We have a terrific panel this morning um, to try and um, talk through these, these, these challenges uh, with Poland, with the leaders of Poland and Lithuania, our two countries that have led the way in the West's response to Ukraine. We have the leader of the Belarusian opposition, and Belarus has played a very central role here and is a very central piece in, in sort of deciding what kind of Europe, what kind of Europe will we have on the eastern flank. Portugal is one of the founding members of the North Atlantic Alliance, and we have the leader of North Macedonia, which is uh, in, in a region which had caused a lot of trouble in the 90s, and I guess we're also is now part of the thinking about what kind of Europe we have going forward. Now, um, I want to start maybe, since it is morning, uh, maybe with, with a couple quick round um, questions for this group uh, to get us going. And um, in a sentence or two, uh, I, I want to ask each of you, um, in these grim times, um, what is the one thing that um, makes you hopeful? Maybe I can start with President Duda. What makes us hopeful? Hopeful. The one thing that gives you hope this year when you think about the future of Europe, the defense of Europe. Absurd will never exist for a long time, in my opinion. So this is this situation <laughs> is is uh, this is absurd. Yes, that this is it's hard to it was hard to imagine that. Uh, 70 years after the Second World War, yes, we will have war in Central Europe in full scale. This is something ridiculous, and 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 that was very that was very that was very hard to believe when we received before the war, yes, all this this uh, secret information um, telling that, that, uh, that uh, we would expect um, full-scale Russian invasion against Ukraine, yes, and that Ukraine will probably survive no more than uh, 72 hours, yes, and, and uh, you know, it's, that was something I was I remember I was counting those thousands of, of, of Russian military units, yes, and, and, and soldiers. Uh, is it possible, yes, if you if you if you take into account and the, the the general number of, of Russian military forces, yes, and 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 you have the the information that Putin gathers. Um, some part of, of 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 his military forces around Ukraine, yes, one one hundred sixty thousand, one hundred seventy thousand, yes. Is it enough to to invade whole uh, Ukraine? Yes, if you if you take into account that this is uh, a country two times bigger than Poland. Poland is three hundred. Uh, Twelve thousand square kilometers. Yes, Ukraine is 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 two times bigger, yes, it's more than uh, 600,000. Is it possible that they will occupy... Uh, Andrzej, Kaminski said a sentence or two, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but, in the morning. Okay, but what's... what's but that's hopeful, what, in it's, a it's, sense. It's, it's, it's very... <laughs> Ukraine is still what, here. What, I, I, don't want to, I, I don't want to... I'm sorry, it's, 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 it's too early morning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to 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 to, to speak about um, about hope. Yes, I'm very happy that uh, Ukrainians are so brave, and and 
a day before the invasion, a few hours before the invasion, when uh, we visited, we both visited Kiev with 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 uh, President Gitanas Nauseda. Yes, we we talked with Volodymyr Zelensky. He said to me, Andrei, we are really ready. He said to me, we are really ready. And 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 we will never survive. Uh, we, we will never. Uh, we will never. Um, we will never surrender. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. President Nasera, what? I would like to stress a few moments. Uh, first of again, all, again, a couple of sentences. Uh, uh, maybe okay, I try, more than I try, two, but less than five. Best, I think. I uh, try my best. First of all, the success of Ukrainian military forces in the battlefields. I remember our first meeting after the war broke out uh, on February 25th in European Council. And there was direct connection with uh, Volodymyr Zelensky. And you know the mood was that maybe it will continue one or two weeks, but not longer. And now we already approach one year anniversary, terrible anniversary, but uh, one year anniversary of this war. Uh, the second issue is, despite our some disagreements, we stay united. I, uh, I am talking about European Union and uh, also other like-minded countries. And uh, you see, uh, we passed already ninth packages of sanctions. Sometimes with certain exemptions that take, uh, trying to take to into account uh, the specificities of some countries, but uh, even having quite difficult situation, we are able to stay united. And this unity is productive. They, there are two kinds of unity. Unity which is just uh, had, uh, cannot produce anything, and unity which is still productive. It le leads us to the decisions. So those two moments, I think, they are very important. And if we will be able to increase uh, the support to Ukraine, first of all, in the milita military sense of this word, I think uh, the victory will be there. And th this is not so long way to go. Super. President Penderovsky. Two sentences? Yes. You know, the situation is completely desperate. Speaking about the European continent, we have multiplying crises simply reinforcing each other. There is no too much room for hope. But I will take the solidarity being shown on the unprecedented levels among the European partners and transatlantic bond, which, which has been never stronger in a decades. I will take the hope from last year as the point of departure for hope for this year. Thank you. Thank you. And as for me, I think that uh, unity of uh, democratic countries and decisiveness uh, of countries uh, gives me hope. And uh, I know that, uh, for example, Belarusians, they have already ripe for democratic changes in our country, and they will stand for these changes till the end. And uh, I'm grateful uh, that there are such leadership uh, as uh, uh, Polish leadership and Lithuanian leadership that show example for other countries how to deal uh, when the uh, enemy is knocking to your doors. So uh, I'm really uh, grateful for opportunity for uh, Belarusians to participate um, in this new uh, security architecture of uh, our region. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, not only politicians, but ordinary people realize that uh, a lot depends on them. And they open their uh, doors and their hearts for all those who are looking for uh, defense, who are looking for support. Perfect. Mr. Bueno, you come from the other side of the continent, a little bit more peaceful side. But, no. but I'm going to say uh, more or less the same idea as that the, from the east. So coming from the south, the hope comes from this sense of unity. And it's unity of purpose, unity around our values, our European values that are pluralism, diversity, rule of law, reject of the war as a, as a, as a way of settling disputes. And um, we are all looking towards the future. Our future uh, is European integration and these European values. And we are rejecting those that look toward the past, a very dark past in Europe, the spheres of influences, walls, fences. So this is the real hope. You know, I was going to ask um, 
as a follow-up, a quick round question, uh, what worries you the most? But I think we got from all of you kind of a, a sort of hint of the worries. You did all speak about the unity of, of the alliance and the unified response. Um, and not to put a too negative uh, light on this, but I wonder, again, very quickly, where is the weak link? What, where do you think that, how can this be undermined? Uh, where, what are you most worried about in terms of that unity um, staying in, in uh, place? Starting from yes, this side, yeah. I'm not afraid that this unity will be broken. I think that both in the Ukrainian crisis and before in the COVID crisis, we have realized that the bad method is doing things together. And if we compare this and how we tackled the crisis in 2008, the financial crisis, that took 10 years to get out, we have all realized that being united, being together, we get better through the crisis, we get out of the crisis faster and in better shape, leaving less people behind. So the only thing that worries me knows within is that outside there is someone that thinks in an old fashion that war and violence is a way to impose your ideas and to settle political disputes. Maybe another way to put it to, to you, like how would this, what is your worst case scenario for this year? Uh, I, I, um, I, I, I sort of wouldn't, wouldn't let, me, let me ask your, your sort of neighbor. Uh, uh, oh. uh, yeah, yeah. Um, to you. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what really, I mean, again, I think all of you give a sense of, um, you know, that there is resilience uh, among the allies, but what, what worries you the most? So, uh, of course, I'm going to describe your ideal scenario uh, at the moment. I'm sure that uh, Ukrainians, with the assistance and help of democratic countries, will win. Uh, this uh, war and uh, there will be changes uh, hopefully in uh, Russian administration and uh, so as we know that the, the fate of uh, Ukraine and Belarus are intertwined so I'm sure that uh, the victory of Ukraine will be a new wind of opportunities for uh, Belarusian people to uprise again and to get rid of this uh, dictatorship. So uh, uh, Belarus and uh, Ukraine uh, will be uh, free and uh, we will uh, become of uh, part of European family of countries and we we'll in Belarus, we will build uh, democracy. In Ukraine, they will restore uh, their cities again with the help of uh, the world. And uh, everybody will be happy. <laughs> it's an unusually uh, bright view from, 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 that, yeah, from, but, from but, our part of the world. But we, so. li <laughs> we live in reality, and I understand that uh, there can be different scenarios. But we help, have to be prepared for everything. No, I have no concerns that the newly found unity and solidarity, not only pan-European, but transatlantic, will not hold this year. It will hold. But to be realistic and to be honest with everybody, with the public, with you, I'm a bit concerned whether that will hold when the, the war in Ukraine is over. Of course, everybody would, would like that war to, to, to stop today. But, uh, you know, the logic of the states, the logic of the national interests of the states has always been for centuries and centuries to, to take a look of your backyard. If we are going again towards giving priority to the national interests of the states, then this newly found unity and solidarity will be gone. Why it is necessary after the war in Ukraine is over, why it is really necessary, critical even, to hold this unity and solidarity, transatlantic bond? Because you, we are seeing throughout the world, in some of the biggest countries in the world, mm -hmm. that the authoritarian tendencies are on the rise. If democracies are not getting together, sticking together, respecting the same values, and fighting for them, sometimes literally fighting for them, then the autocracy will prevail. We have said last year when this war in Ukraine started, well before that in Belarus, that this is in essence the dilemma and battle between democracies and autocracies and outright dictatorship in the part of, on the part of the Russian Federation today. So we have to be in full unity and in full solidarity after the war in Ukraine is over. That is necessary for the better world. President Narseda, I mean, they spoke sort of very sort of at a higher level. I wonder when you're thinking about the things that sort of concern you, is there anything more um, uh, immediate or, or sort of uh, mm -hmm. um, specific that, 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 that maybe comes to your mind? 
I will start first of all from saying that I am a strong believer that uh, Ukraine will uh, have this victory and it will be a very important victory for Ukraine itself, but for all of us too. But worries me. You know, Putin realized that he was absolutely wrong by calculating the, some assumptions of this war, uh, but uh, he is desperate uh, too. And it means that he is able uh, to concentrate all the efforts uh, and resources of big country, Russian Federation, ignoring economic and social needs of the society. This is the specific feature of the totalitarian regimes that they can ignore the needs of the people and to bring anything on the altar of the war. And uh, this is one issue. The second issue is that, yes, I have some concern that uh, Western societies can be tired from this war because we have already some, some, some features or some signs of uh, uh, tired Western societies, first of all because of high inflation, inflation of energy resources, and we uh, are not so used to the inflation rate like 10%, 15% on, or in some countries 20%. And it means that uh, having the democratic rules of game in our countries, politicians will be just will spend more attention to these issues too. But I think this one possible outcome uh, from this puzzle or solution of this puzzle we have to stay united and we have to take all the decisions which are uh, oriented towards reduction of dependence on Russian energy resources. My country is a very good example. We started very early because we never had any illusions regarding Russian regime. So we, get, we started to prepare ourselves about 20, 25 years ago. And now we bear the fruits of these uh, actions on, on, on these efforts. We were able to cut off all the ties with uh, Russian energy resources uh, one year ago. And uh, I think this is very important to do at the European Union level. We started, we started quite successfully, but we have to continue because some countries are still um, dependent, they are exposed to the uh, Russian blackmailing, especially energy blackmailing, and this is uh, very important to break, uh, break uh, up this, this dependence. A chance for one word answer even, and then I want to come back to you with a more specific question that will require more. What is the weak link in the West's response to uh, Ukraine? There has been one message from Ukraine since the beginning of the war. Um, this is what uh, Vladimir Zelensky told us uh, at the beginning uh, on the phone. You know that I, at the beginning of the war, I, I talked with him practically every day, even a few times uh, a day uh, on the phone. And he, he, he and he, and there is one, and, and, and there has been one message: uh, uh, weapons, weapons, and once again, weapons. We need weapons. We need military uh, support, and and this is the and this is the and this is the the the, 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 the most important element of, of 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 this of this game. Yes, if we send, um, if we still. If we still send um, a lot of military equipment uh, for um, for the defenders of, of Ukraine, cutting edge military equipment, uh, they 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 still have this uh, this uh, this potential uh, to, to 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 stop Russians. So I think you answered the question, but the weak link, but indirectly, and let me maybe it's actually was leading to my follow up, which is um, tomorrow uh, Chancellor Schultz is speaking here. Um, Germany, um, you know, the UK has just been the first country to um, uh, send tanks uh, to Ukraine. The US is talking about sending the Abrams tanks. Um, what do you expect or hope out of this week? Will Germany send the Leopard tanks? 
what might happen at this Ramstein meeting of defense ministers later this week in terms of arming? Have we turned the corner in terms of giving the Ukrainians more um, offensive weapons or, um, or not? <laughs> um, uh, five days ago, I announced uh, um, our decision uh, as, um, about about uh, Leopard tanks. Yes, uh, one company of, of 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 Leopard tanks. It's about uh, fourteen tanks. Uh, we we really decided to send it to to, to Ukraine, but we hope. And, and we are trying to organize uh, a, a bigger uh, support for, for Ukraine. So we hope that uh, there is a, 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 a few partners, a few allies, uh, um, who, 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 will, who, who, will, uh, um, who will give tanks to, 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 to Ukraine, Leopard tanks, Challenger tanks mm -hmm. from, from Great Britain. Yes, and, and so so I so we hope that producer of the banks Germany will will also will also um, participate in 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 this um, in my opinion very 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 um, good idea. Um, I was asked by by Volodymyr Zelensky for that uh, for that uh, military support few times. He said to me, Andrzej, we need we need uh, modern tanks. Uh, because because it's 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 uh, it's the only way we can to, to stop the uh, Russian invasion now they we, we sent uh, to, to Ukraine um, our crop uh, officers yes very modern and, and very efficient um, we sent to Ukraine more than um, 260 um, our tanks but but uh, old ones. Uh, but old tanks, uh, uh, we, we had those tanks uh, um, um, uh, from 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 USSR, yes. And and uh, but but that in, but that moment it was uh, half a uh, half a year ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in, in March, as I remember. Uh, they needed those tanks in that moment. Uh, that was that was immediate need. And 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 so we decided to 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 send this uh, this this. You know, it was it was it was more it was more that we afford it was more than that, than we afford. Uh, we 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 hadn't those tanks in in our reserves. That was ta that, that those tanks uh, were um, we we. we 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 took those tanks out of, of 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 our military units, yes, regular military units, but 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 we understood that that this is that this is uh, this is the this is uh, this is you know issue of the of the of uh, of, 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 of 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 this the really that that this is that it, 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 it that this decision uh, that was that was the very difficult moment because uh, russian military forces you, you remember they, they 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 were around practically around kiev so that was that was very difficult uh, time uh, for, right. for 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 defenders of, of of ukraine we decided to send help that was and practically that was the beginning of the of the big military support for 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 Ukraine and and so so we hope that this time uh, that this decision uh, we, that we announced that we 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 are we 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 are sending uh, our our leopards to Ukraine will start a new chapter in 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 this in this military in this military uh, assist to to, to and Ukraine. And are you talking to the U.S. about um, sending your MiGs to Ukraine and getting uh, sort of the um, I think F-18s or F-35s in in return, or is that sort of a dead issue for now? A very complicated okay, story. Okay. <laughs> so please, <laughs> no, no, maybe we should switch off the cameras. Yeah. <laughs> Continue but, speaking from the top. Mr. Bueno, I could have, you know, from from a NATO perspective and a country further away. Um, how much more do you think uh, the the alliance should be providing in terms of military hardware to to Ukraine? 
I think that the, the, the unity <coughs> of all Europeans, have, of Europeans with our natural transatlantic allies, especially the United States, is out of question. But it must be very clear, and, and this is also an important part of what is going to be at the stake this, this year, that this is Vladimir Putin's war. Neither NATO, no European Union, no any uh, European country has won in this war or is at war against Russia. Uh, because sometimes in Europe and, and in this panel, we all know where we are uh, talking about that. Last week, I traveled to uh, Western Sub-Saharan Africa. The week before, I was in Latin America. Things don't seem that clear. Sometimes it seems like this is Russia against the Western world. We must keep remembering NATO is not a part of this war. President Zelensky and Ukraine didn't want this war and didn't do anything to deserve this war. This is Russia's war. So, so far, the, uh, pol the political support comes from all allies, but the weapons comes from European Union and from European Union countries. And I think it is very important to make these things clear, because otherwise we can lose a lot of partners around the world. That's a very good point. And President Nauseta, I kind of I, I curious to you, um, um, you know, that, that's, that sort of speaks to some divisions within the alliance about how far to go, obviously. Um, I, I wonder how, how you've managed those divisions since you're obviously in the more the um, avant-garde in terms of uh, trying to, to push the alliance forward. Uh, you know, we are not a big country, of course, but we started to support Ukraine militarily, and we, we are the example how decisive we can be. And we started to deliver stingers to Ukraine even two weeks before the war started. And uh, uh, this was our strong commitment and absolute unity in our society. I have to stress this factor too. Because in Lithuania, 99.9% .9 of the population strongly support Ukraine. And uh, this, uh, in such an environment, it's very easy to take the decisions, tough decisions. But uh, sometimes, yes, we, yeah, I have the impression that uh, somebody has to take the first move, uh, like with, in this story with the, with the tanks. I like uh, to play chess. So in chess, you have to take the move, and then others will follow. So, uh, and uh, somebody has to take this leadership, to take the decision in, in order to support Ukraine, because the tanks become very strategic factor of this war, especially now, having uh, in mind this positional war in the eastern part of the country. So one word answer. Do you think Chancellor Schultz will green light the I, leopard? I strongly believe that uh, Councillor okay. Schultz will uh, decide on this. And I was a witness of a very uh, important break point uh, or turning point in the thinking or mentality of Germany. By the way, the, uh, one more witness was uh, Prime Minister of Poland, uh, 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 Mr. Morawiecki, and we visited Berlin. And at that time, Germans decided that instead of providing uh, humanitarian aid, they decided to deliver weapons. It was first very important qualitative moment in the decision making of Germany. And now we, uh, we are uh, in the, the situation where there is more uh, commitment needed, uh, stronger commitment needed to deliver armored vehicles, uh, tanks to Ukraine, and hope very much that our stronger ally will do this. Right. Let me just change tack, if you don't mind. Um, I want to ask President Sikhanovskaya if the elections were um, uh, uh, confirmed, as, as I guess a lot of us, uh, a lot of people in the West hoped. Um, what is your reading of, of where Lukashenko is uh, right now? Um, and do you expect that uh, he would or Putin would open that northern front from, from Belarus? 
So first of all, when you are asking our panelists about weapon, I feel a little bit as alien here because we are as Belarusian people who are under uh, repressions uh, for two and a half years already. We can't give high marks or craps to Ukrainian people. But uh, the most of the population of Belarus are for Ukraine. We don't want uh, to become enemies because of uh, awful decisions of illegitimate uh, Lukashenko. Uh, we are supporting Ukrainians as we can with information. When the war has started, our uh, railway partisans disrupted railways to slow down equipment, uh, Russian equipment going to uh, Ukraine. We, uh, our uh, volunteers spread information inside Belarus what's going on uh, in reality. But now we are in such a position when uh, Belarus unexpectedly for uh, people became uh, co-aggressive in this war because uh, Lukashenko is uh, maybe the only ally uh, to Putin. He has to be loyal. He provided our country as launch pad for missiles, for training of uh, uh, Russian um, soldiers. And uh, I have to say that the Belarusian army is not loyal to Lukashenko. They don't want to die or to be killed on the Ukrainian battlefields for the ambitions of two usurpers. They are, uh, don't want our nations, Ukrainian and Belarusians, to become enemies. And Lukashenko knows this. And that's why he is so insecure uh, about uh, sending Belarusian troops to Ukraine. Because our soldiers, even if they are sent, they could uh, change the sides, they could uh, defect, they could hide or whatever. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, Lukashenko is welcoming uh, all the uh, Russian troops, uh, all the Russian equipment, and uh, for sure Belarus can be again and again used as uh, uh, aircraft carrier uh, for uh, Russians. The presence of uh, Russian troops, the number is about uh, 12,000 people uh, at the moment, is for threatening Belarusian people, to control uh, Belarusian people, and to distract attention of uh, Ukrainian troops from hot spots on the east to uh, northern side. I know that Ukrainians are prepared for possible land attacks from the side of Belarus, but our task is to prevent such invasion. We are working very thoroughly with the, our Belarusian army, explaining what's going mm -hmm. on, because they, must, may, they might be uh, misinformed about this. So this internal, um, uh, internal explanation is very important in this issue. So we want the world to divide uh, Lukashenko's regime and Belarusian people and to perceive us differently. Um, so one, one last question I want to pose, and then I'm going to open up to the floor. So please think about maybe things you, you, you would want to ask. Um, uh, President Penderovsky, uh, we haven't talked about the Balkans that much, but there is some sort of you sort of notice on this you know lower down on we in have the front a page round table on, on two days from now about the western okay. balkan but, okay, but, but tell me quickly how well. much how worried should we be about what is going on in uh, Mitrovica what's coming out of Banja Luka I, I mean you're one of the newest members of of NATO and this obviously was a major preoccupation for the alliance in the 90s early 2000s short overview uh, we have two fragile points or hotspots if you like from times to times uh, in the Western Balkan region. This is Republika Srpska within Bosnia and Herzegovina and north of the Republic of Kosovo. What uh, Putin's regime is doing is for years back, not only since the war in Ukraine started, but for years back, he is trying to provoke the people there in order to disrupt the integrity of these two countries. Uh, but realistically speaking, in the past year or so, uh, uh, Russian propaganda, fake news, political propaganda, hybrid threats, that kind of attacks has not intensified because Putin's regime is fully preoccupied to counter the Western alliance because of the war in Ukraine. But uh, local actors, some of them who are not quite happy with the so-called peace agreements being reached in the 90s, are doing their part of the job. And they are from time to time provoking broken with the inflammatory rhetoric than some disturbances in these two countries. My uh, guessing is and my judgment is uh, that if uh, Russia will try to deflect somehow the attention of the West again from Ukraine, which is the main theater of war and of propaganda, of course, that the Balkan or the Western Balkan region is more prone to that than Baltics. So we should take care about that as an alliance, as a NATO alliance, 
and then as a, as a member states of the European Union or candidates for, for membership in the European Union, because it seems to me that the so-called soft spots in the whole pan-European security architecture right now, apart from Ukraine, of course, and uh, that danger coming from Kremlin, in this direction is Western Balkan. Who's the key player here, EU, NATO, or the US? United States. Interesting. With due respect to everybody else, and I've heard the Minister of Spain speaking about the European... Portugal. Uh, sorry, Spain. Portugal. Spain, Spain, Spain. Spain. Sorry, it was, it was it's Portugal on the... On the <laughs> we share the Iberian Peninsula, and I love my, <laughs> my Portuguese colleague, but I'm still the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, speaking about uh, Europe, only, Euro uh, only the European well, countries, yeah, or the European... Very, <laughs> uh, very shortly, just to, to explain a bit more, yeah. said so that your only European yeah, countries are giving point. weapons to Ukraine. <laughs> The most of the weapons, with due respect to everybody of us, my country, North Macedonia, is among the top five contributors in the military hardware to Ukraine, but the United States of America is leading the field. Perfect. Are there any questions from the, from the audience? Um, and please uh, pose it as a question and do introduce yourself. Yeah. Um, I am part of the Global Shapers community, the WEF's uh, youth delegation. You've all expressed your confidence in Ukraine winning the war, but my question to you is what needs to happen for Ukraine to win? Can Ukraine win with Putin in office? Or does there need to be a change in the Russian leadership and how ready you are? Sorry? No, no, no. We don't, we, we, we don't mention that Ukraine will win this war. We mentioned that Ukraine will not lose this war. <laughs> so I then, mentioned Ukraine will win this war. <laughs> okay, second question. <laughs> no, really no, 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 continue, no, please, please. Then the question is for peace to come back to Europe, then um, does there need to be a leadership change in Russia and how mm. far are you ready to go to push for that? Thank you. That's a really good question. I wonder who, who wants to address this regime process. change in Moscow to make... Ah. Europe, this safe place. processes will go in parallel. The more successful Ukraine is in the battlefields, the higher the probability that something will happen in Kremlin. Because sooner or later, it will lead to the mistrust in the closest, among the closest allies of Vladimir Putin. And yes, I cannot ignore or I cannot um, neglect this possibility that something might uh, happen in Kremlin and it would mean the end of the war too. I have no illusions that it will be a democratic government replacing Vladimir Putin. Probably there will be a long transitional period ahead and uh, nobody knows what will be the outcome but probably it would lead to the resolution of this uh, crisis in Ukraine. But uh, the second scenario of uh, very important and evident victories in the battlefields is possible too. So the both scenarios I think are likely and uh, probably now it would be not serious to try to forecast because those forecasts would be not very credible to try to forecast which scenario we will go. There's a question back there, and then we'll go over here. Yeah. My name is Wolfgang Krach. I'm the editor-in-chief of uh, Süddeutsche Zeitung in Germany. President Duda, you mentioned uh, you were talking about the delivery of tanks, Leopard 2, to, to Ukraine. As you, we follow in Germany the very skeptical, uh, rejective attitude of, of Chancellor uh, Olaf Scholz up to now, and his hesitating. Uh, why do you think that he will change his attitude and uh, allow or, or endorse the delivery of uh, Leopard 2 tanks now? Uh, two reasons, sir. One reason, Germany is, a, is, is part of the, of the NATO alliance and, and uh, if there is a situation that uh, few allies are ready to, to give uh, their tanks to, to, to Ukraine, it's it's important moment. And the second is that, uh, as I see, the pressure of uh, political 
uh, um, German political stage and, and, and German public opinion is, is, is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. So I, I hope that the result of all that and elements, uh, um, that the, all that elements will result in, in, in this very, 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 very needed decision. Right here. My name is Markus Preis and uh, I have worked with AID German TV in Brussels. Uh, since you already answered, my question goes to President Nauseda. Uh, just the other way around, do you have any understanding why Germany, why Chancellor Scholz is so reluctant to be more decisive? You made such a strong case why tanks should be delivered. Do you understand why Germany is hesitant? And uh, the other question goes to the uh, Spanish Foreign Minister. Spain was among the first countries to propose to send Leopard tanks to Ukraine uh, back in summer. If there was a, were a decision right now to send them, were Spain also sending tanks? Thank you. I will try to answer very shortly. Yes, we have 27 members of European Union, but the attitude of the society to what is happening in Ukraine is, is, is quite different. I could uh, name again the example of, of my country. I could not, I cannot even imagine that, for example, some demonstrations against uh, the support to Ukraine could take place in my country. Probably they will not collect uh, 200 people in my country. But I understand also that situation in some other countries is different. And President Duda mentioned that the attitude of German society is changing, but still we cannot ignore the reality that still the attitude or the mood of German society is absolutely different comparing with the Lithuania. So this is the reason why politicians have to take into account uh, this situation, and sometimes it, it explains that some decisions in some very important countries of European Union and NATO come later than we all expect and we would wish. So this is the reason why, why we see some delay in the decision making. And I have to tell you honestly, it's a pity because every day of this war costs a lot. Not to us, not so much to us. For us, it it's just means that probably energy resources are more expensive, but it's, it's peanuts comparing with, with the suffering of Ukrainian nation. So every day brings uh, more casualties, more destroyed houses, infrastructure, and so on, someone. So we have not, we don't have the luxury to do for such delays. And decision making must be decisive, fast, and it would lead to the faster victory in this war. Um, there is a very important meeting of ministers of defense in a, in a few days where uh, important decisions will be made and we like to do things together and united because we think that that's the best tool to bring peace to Ukraine. That possibility is not on the table as we are speaking today, but the way Spain is behaving in, in, in this Ukrainian war is at each state we do what we think is the best to help Ukrainians to defend its sovereignty and territorial integrity and to bring peace the fastest as possible to the country. Super. You know, sir, our countries spent uh, almost 45 years behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, so uh, we know Russians uh, very well. And there is one there is one answer in Poland, in Lithuania, in, in Ukraine. Ruski Mir, no, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm coming from, from Washington. Let me ask a very parochial Washington kind of question to this group of European leaders. Um, uh, 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 how concerned are you about some of the noises coming out of the, surprisingly, I guess, if you look, look at the, the history of American foreign policy, of, of the Republican Party? Um, it, which is uh, calling into doubt support for Ukraine. Um, uh, uh, kind of curious, how closely are you even following that? 
Um, it, it's uh, for Ukraine, but it's actually support yeah, for the alliance. Course. Since uh, the previous uh, president I, said NATO. You know, we are really far away from Washington, D.C., but <laughs> <laughs> geographically speaking, but politically, we are following that closely. Mm. I am not seeing very strong signals that within the Republican Party, these voices are so prevalent, so to say. And it seems to me that the bipartisan support within the Washington, D.C., towards the war in Ukraine is unprecedented. I, you're, you're living there, you're coming from the United States, then tell me any other issue on which the Americans or political parties, two main of them, are so unified around. There's no any other single issue. So on the issue of Ukraine, war in Ukraine or Russian invasion in Ukraine, they are, I think, 90% unified. And it's, it's going to hold. Yes, we can. This is a matter of concern, of course. We are also closely watching what is happening there. But uh, I think we have to decide uh, just uh, by looking what the uh, United States government is doing. And the United States government is doing a lot. And I expect that there will be bold decisions taken in NATO summit, which will take place in Vilnius this time in July. And we have very high expectations that it will be not only the summit dedicated to the, our own security, but also the summit dedicated to the security of Ukraine, meaning that we will uh, find some formulas or algorithms regarding the expectations of Ukraine uh, to integrate closer to the, uh, to the NATO too. So far, of course, I cannot, uh, any expect I cannot uh, um, uh, say that uh, we will discuss the full-fledged membership of Ukraine in NATO. But we have to find some new expressions or, 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 or sentences just giving the hope to our friends right. in Ukraine. Because every time, to repeat what we already said in Bucharest summit in 2008, we keep the uh, doors open. It's not enough anymore. And we got this message very clearly with yeah. President Duda uh, uh, when we gathered uh, in Lviv. Okay. Uh, please, don't tell us that the door is open, because we cannot find this door, face this door. <laughs> when, when should, not, not, when will uh, Ukraine join NATO, do you think? When? Yeah, give me a date. Oh. Please <laughs> give me uh, raise uh, more uh, simple uh, questions, but I believe that is it's possible in few uh, years' time. But uh, uh, having uh, in mind that we will be uh, very committed to 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 grant uh, this uh, status to Ukraine, like we did in European Union. Uh, I have in mind uh, candidate status to Ukraine. But okay. it will depend very much on the success of Ukraine in this war. One word, one word question to you. When will the uh, regime of Lukashenko fall? <laughs> I can't say such One word answer. <laughs> I, I, I don't know such prognosis, but uh, I think that we all have to do everything possible for this to happen as soon as possible. And on behalf of all Belarusian people, and I will dare to say on behalf of Ukrainians, that we are grateful to uh, all the countries that are supporting us uh, in uh, our difficult paths to uh, democratic changes, to our serenity and independence. And uh, long live Belarus and glory to Ukraine. Super. Last word to you, and we're over time, so I... <laughs> I always say we, sh we have to support Ukraine. This is, this is the, the most important element. But of course, and the United States, they, they have the, the, the key, the crucial role in, in that process, yes. But, 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 but you, 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 sh you shouldn't underestimate the, the role of the rest of the, of the NATO alliance because it's much easier for um, uh, American authorities, for the President Biden and the members of, of, of uh, American administration to, to, to send next um, uh, supplies, military supplies for Ukraine um, if, 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 they can, if they can say, okay, but, 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 but we help with the rest of the NATO, yes, because Poland sent uh, military military support to Ukraine 
and this is uh, more than two billion dollars. Yes, it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a huge money for the country like Poland. Uh, um, um, uh, I don't know, uh, Great Britain sent uh, a, a, a tremendous uh, a military support. Uh, to Ukraine, yes, and and uh, and uh, and and even Lithuania. Lithuania is a small country, but but they send practically all their. Um, 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 uh, what, what's the, the not all the, weapons? No, not, not all, all weapons. Not weapons. <laughs> not all weapons, but stingers. All your stingers. stingers yes. All yes. your stingers. Out you sent all your stingers. Yes. <laughs> that there was a moment we sent practically all our thunderbolt. You know this this kind of weapon is against the the the, the, the aircraft. And uh, so, so, so it's 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 really difficult situation, and we understand that. But and and the and this uh, military support for Ukraine is a crucial element of of this, of this uh, of uh, how to how to solve this difficult situation. Super. Thank you. Um, on that note, thanks to all the the leaders uh, for for coming the, this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you.